welcome back to another video hope you are having a great day and before we do some tests and share here some results we are going to cover some of the differences between Wi-Fi 7 Wi-Fi 6 and even Wi-Fi 5 and if it's worth it the upgrade now I've got some devices here actually all of these have Wi-Fi 7 this is the Asus Vivo book which has the latest Snapdragon X Elite I'm working with it for a few days and in a few days I'll be sharing with you the results that I've been getting with it really really cool I also have this router Wi-Fi 7 if you are not purchasing a new computer but you want to upgrade your older desktop computer then there's also this kind of solution PCIe and of course I also have the new Google Pixels phone 9 and 9 Pro and the Pro Excel is somewhere on my desk but it didn't make on the test so it will not get on the video now before we do some tests let's talk about Wi-Fi 7 some of the advantages and if it's worth it or not and if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper and besides Windows 11 Pro if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below and before we talk about Wi-Fi 7 let's go back a while and let's talk of one of the major changes on Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 5 and that was the ability to connect more and more devices to Wi-Fi 6 routers and this was especially useful in places which were really crowded we are talking about schools hospitals and every single place that has a lot of people it was a huge advantage in technology now the bandwidth and speed was also increased by double more or less compared Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 but the main one was the number of devices now Wi-Fi 7 is here and has a lot more advantages as well so one of the advantages is that at this moment Wi-Fi seven instead of having only 2.4 gigahertz bands and 5 gigahertz bands also as 6 gigahertz band so an extra band which is great especially for speeds which we will talk in just a few moments I believe that the second improvement is in my personal opinion of course not less important than the first not the last which is multi-link so we have three bands in the past we had two but our devices either manually or automatically had to choose between 2.4 or 5 gigahertz usually if we were close to the router it would choose 5 gigahertz and if we were further away it would choose 2.4 gigahertz and most of our phones and laptops would do that choice automatically but at this moment what we have with multi-link is that any device with Wi-Fi 7 does not have to choose between the 2.4 5 or 6 it will connect simultaneously to the 3 bands it doesn't need to choose and that is great because we have three bands available and we are connected simultaneously to all of them so the devices will talk each other and it will choose the best band to use at each moment without having to disconnect and lose that connection even by milliseconds so that's why I said that in my personal opinion is not less important than the first and then the last which is speed and bandwidth now Wi-Fi 5 we could get a maximum of 3.5 gigabit bandwidth Wi-Fi 6 went to 9.6 gigabit in terms of bandwidth and now Wi-Fi 7 before I finish the sentence write down below in the comment section what do you believe it's the number without googling of course but the answer is 46 gigabits of bandwidth this means that I will be able over Wi-Fi 7 depending on the device that I have to get speeds over 46 gigabits which is 46,000 megabits per second download or upload it's a lot my internet provider only sells me 500 megabits per second and we are talking here on 
46,000 megabits per second download and upload. So that is just huge. Now we will only be able to achieve those speeds depending on the device that we have. For example, I've got this router here, which the maximum bandwidth is 3,600 megabits per second, which is far from the Wi-Fi technology maximum, which is 46,000 megabits per second. I also have this PCI expansion slot, which is about 6,000 megabits per second of band. So there are a lot of different different devices. At this moment, this is the first router that I'm testing out, but soon I will bring more so that we can check out some of the differences. But talking about differences, let's go and do a few tests. So the first test here near the router, and I just finished doing one test, but let's start another one. And by the way, near here, I've got the Asus VivoBook S15 with, look at that, the Snapdragon X Elite. So stay tuned to the channel, and in a few days, you'll have the performance of that computer, which is awesome. Now, at this moment, I'm getting the maximum of my network connection, actually my ISP connection, which is 500 megabits per second downloads and 100 megabits per second on upload, which we usually have 120, 150, so I'm reaching the maximum. But let's go a bit further and see what kind of results we will get. And now on the far end of the office, and don't mind the mess, the router is right over there, and I'm just near my door. And without any surprises, we are talking about 40 square meters right over here, and we are with line of sight, 500 megabits per second, which is the maximum. So, so far, no issues whatsoever. Okay, and now a bit further away, this is the area that I've got my gym and the cinema setup, and uh, even a bike, which is doing quite a way, I'm not really sure. I've got a lot of stuff here, don't mind that. But in an area of about 100 square meters, we have a few walls on the way. You can see the ASUS VivoBook S15 right over there. So the router is about here and we have a few walls in the middle, but the result is more or less the same. So in a 100 square meters with a few walls and so on and so forth, we still haven't reached the maximum that we can get on my ISP connection, of course. So 500 megabits per second on download and 150 on upload. Let's get a bit further away. Okay, and now outside near the swimming pool, which probably it's where I should be swimming instead of doing these crazy tests. But just to say that the router is right over there on that wall, behind that wall and that uh, door right over there. So there are quite a few barriers and the distance as well, which is not that small of a distance. So we are talking about more than 100 square meters with walls and so on and so forth. And we still get 423 megabits per second. But I was testing a few moments ago for my Puchkis channel and I was getting 500 megabits per second. So I'm not really sure if I changed one step forward or backward not really sure still great results for one single router no mesh at all just one unit at this moment 375 let's do one more so that we can check out and then we go a little bit further away now we are reaching as i was saying 500 megabits per second ah, 460 okay close enough let's move on now at the far end of the backyard and before we were about in the middle right now we are here at the end the office is right over there and we are reaching 450 430 megabits per second download and 150 on upload which is the maximum sorry for the image that sometimes gets a bit blurred because of the refresh rate but just to show you that i'm on the edge here of the the end of the backyard and the result still great having in mind that behind that wall right over there which is a thick wall with windows and so on and so forth and that door is the router on the original position without any mesh without any other units just one single unit now one floor immediately above the office as you can see the backyard that we just left and this is an interesting test especially for those that are thinking on using it on 
places with more than one floor and at this moment we are reaching roughly 400 sorry 45 megabits per second download on upload and on download uh, more or less the same and i was saying that this is an interesting test especially for those that have more than one floor and the floor from one to the other is usually thicker than any wall so it's a huge barrier and a great test but even with this kind of speeds we were able to browse the web and so on and so forth and even if i wanted to do an upload video it would take a bit longer but it would manage to do so and now we are two floors above and we still have signal right over there which is great as you can see the backyard down below and we are two floors um, above immediately above so i'm not really on another division of the house this is two floors above both and the curious thing is that we still have signal although it's a bit weaker and we are getting about 12 megabits per second download and about the same on upload if i want to browse the web two floors above with wi-fi 7 then great we can if i want to upload a video then that's probably a different story but we have connection right over here and it's working quite well so as you could see on the test in terms of improvements i don't see nothing major in terms of coverage and even in terms of speed but that's because the test that i'm doing is a basic test which is a test that anyone will understand and it will help to decide if this is the router that we need depending on our isp provider but the truth is that we are not only limited to our isp provider so if this has a bandwidth of 3600 megabits per second on download and on 3600 megabits per second on upload each way that means that i can connect several devices simultaneously and i can access for example a network attached storage solution from different devices and it will not bottleneck until it reaches the 3600 megabits per second on bandwidth now getting a bit geekier in terms of the uh, router it's called the asus rtb58u and if by any reason you forget the name don't worry sometimes i forget as well i will leave the link down below it has a quad core cpu 2.0 gigahertz one gigabyte of ram which is quite a lot for a router but it's necessary for wi-fi 7. it has one 2.5 gig port at the back and for one gigabit port at the back and one of the questions that we might have is does it make sense to have a 2.5 gig port and then one 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 and in my opinion yes and no it depends if you need all of them 2.5 then you will need all of them 2.5 and you will need to get a different router or a switch for example but for example, if I connect a, because I don't have 2.5 gig internet connection, if I connect a network attached storage solution over Ethernet on my 10 gig switch, I will have 2,500 megabits per second getting in. So this means that theoretically I will be able to connect several phones, several laptops, and I can stream movies over that connection up to 2500 megabits per second without any issues whatsoever let's imagine that besides that i will connect on one of these ports another windows computer for example with any service that i want and if i access with more devices to that windows computer i will not be bottlenecked because i'm only achieving 2.5 gigs right over here and i still have room for one gigabit and i still have room for one more 100 megabits per second because this is 3600 megabits per second bandwidth but enough of bandwidth now there's also a usb 3.0 port which is useful not only to share movies and series and whatnot which is one of the ways that i don't use these devices anymore like that but especially if you are in an area where you can't connect to the net over the 2.5 one you can put in a usb thumb drive with the sim lte and you will be able to access to the internet over 4g so this is a router that is not only to be connected via ethernet but also using a usb uh, not drive but a usb connection 4g lte which is really really cool besides that basically it has four external antennas which is great for coverage and speed as you could see 
and the ASUS uh, software, which is also really easy to use. Now, the bad news is if you want to use a router such as this, and if you have a phone with Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6, or if you want to use your old laptop, or if you want to use your, I don't know, a gaming console, you will not be able to. You will need to purchase everything new. Uh, so really bad, no, I'm just joking. Wi-Fi 7, like Wi-Fi 6 before, uh, will be compatible with any device. So if you have an older laptop, an older phone, it will connect to the Wi-Fi 7 router, any router, not only this one, or router to be more precise, and it will use the technology that the older device has. So if it's Wi-Fi 6, it will use Wi-Fi 6 technology, although we have Wi-Fi 7 here, but no issues at all. You can upgrade the router and then later on upgrade your laptop up when it's necessary and upgrade your phones when it's necessary. Now, should you upgrade to Wi-Fi 7, at least in terms of the router? And my opinion is there are at least two reasons to do so and at least one reason not to. And the first reason not to is if your router with Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6 gets a good coverage and has great speeds for what you are doing and you don't miss any more, I would say that it's not necessary. You don't need to waste money on new equipment when your older equipment is just doing fine. On the other hand, if you have a lack of good coverage, if you feel that your network and internet speed is not enough, which is two different things, but usually one is hand in hand with the other one, then I would say that yes, probably the upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 will be worth it, having in mind that to take full advantage you will need gear with Wi-Fi 7. The other reason to get it is if your router just stops working at all and instead of purchasing something really old, which is something that unfortunately we see happening and sometimes it's great because it's at the discount price or something like that, but the worst problem is when we are purchasing something just by looking at a shelf in a shop. Oh, I want this router and sometimes I'm paying the same price for older technology than I could get newer technology. So just have that in mind. If you need a new router because yours is dead, just select the one that you want based on price, based on specs, and of course based if you want to upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 or not. And that being said, hopefully this video was helpful to share at least some of the curiosities of Wi-Fi 7 compared with Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5. And if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really, really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.